What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Season 2 of RimWorld. And I'm just selecting some random stuff on the map. I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing actually. A Wanderer has joined us and a Wanderer joining means that you get basically a free colonists. If you choose to accept them. Be warned, they can be traitors. And after they've lived with you for X amount of days, weeks, months, they can turn murderous. If it happens though, it does warn you. So don't worry. So we are up to seven now. That will soon drop. Remember as well, and those of you that don't know, actually, you won't remember, you need to know, and that is that the raids that are set against you are determined by how much wealth you have, and wealth is including people. People add to that wealth. Everything you own adds to that wealth. Everything you have built adds to that wealth. The more wealth you have, the larger the raids that will come and attack you. Diminishing that wealth or removing that wealth will, of course, reduce the waves that come in to attack you. Selling the wealth, don't do anything. So don't fall for that one. Selling the wealth just makes the wealth into silver, and silver is still counted as wealth. So, yeah. It has to be destroyed or given away. For now, it looks like this guy is going to be a builder and researcher. So we have an additional researcher, which is good. Belief isn't the same as ours, but we can mitigate that over time. Uh, the mod you can see using there is called Badges. All it does is allows me to assign a badge, top of the screen now where their images are, their icons are, you can see that they have their own individual badges. The first one being construction, the second one being a chef, the third one being medical, fourth one is research, the next one is crafting, then social, then building or construction again it's just a nice easy way to know who your researchers are and socials are for when you have traders come and things also it, at a glimpse it gives me an idea of what i have got as a priority person and what's missing so with a new schnazzy area for the kill box this is basically because well, we saw it in, I believe it was the last episode actually, the um, the first thing they attacked was my wind turbines and they broke, well, they broke one of them or at least we helped shoot our own wind turbines. Then the others burnt down so I thought why not build our front of our base out a little bit more and we'll keep the power consumption behind the wall as long as the wall isn't in the way of the wind turbines generation, which it isn't, um, then we have that little tyre there. They are braziers. You can see with the lines on them. So basically they are walls with holes in. Very similar to the medieval ages where they used to have slits and stuff for the bowmen. It's similar. The good thing about the embrasures is they're 80% cover. They class as 80% cover. So there's 80% of a chance that the bullet will hit that and instead of you. The original things we had, which were like the sandbags type items, are only 50%. So it is a significant increase in defense. Of course, you shooting through them, it doesn't diminish the shots that you fire because you're shooting through the hole. But taking damage, it certainly makes it less likely for you to get hit. Also, I mentioned in the last episode that we were having problems with the farms. They were far too small. I don't know why I thought that would ever work. So out here, I am going to extend them significantly. The good thing about the farms is they're not a target. So the enemy won't do anything to the farms. There is a slim, very slim chance that they'll maybe set fire to them, but it's unlikely. Um, they won't cause any damage to it. So you can leave that out from... And if you look over in real life, actually, over the over the many, many historic battles and stuff, castles, etc., the fields farming was outside of the boundary. The bedrooms were out off center by one block so i am fixing that now they will then match the center point of that main building where you can see the door the door is one block to the right or to the left sorry the bedrooms so i just need to move all of that over by one to the right and then the bedrooms will match also then i can put some paths down either side i might even open it up actually and have a path down the middle we'll see how it goes yeah, so I ended up ripping it all down and just starting again because it was doing my head in. So I've matched up to the walls now. It's central on that building, as I said. 
the path then allows for a path to go through the center of them. I can then put three bedrooms on the back of each of these bedrooms. So we'll have basically two pods left and right of six bedrooms, giving us 12 for the colonists. Of course, we can then upgrade them to double beds if we get any partners and siblings, etc. And then lastly, we can obviously go more and more and more into the mountain when we need to, if we need to. Keeping all of this behind the main battle line, the only way an enemy can get here is if they drop pod in, which drop pod in into a mountainous area is dangerous because if there's a mountain roof, they'll just go splat. And then the only other way is they've got to fight through the entire front of the base, all the way through the base and get back here. So likely if we do get children, they can be sent to the back of here and the adults will go and fight at the front. Hospital was completed and is being used, though I need to make sure and take care of any blood that is on the floor. Hospital floors need to be clean, right? That's common sense. Infection is rife in this game and it will give you no mercy should you have a dirty hospital. So remember to do so. Whether you can get something that cleans for you or whether you set it as a priority. But like there, I just right click on the floor that is dirty and made somebody do it immediately. That way that person that is recovering is a lot less likely to get an infection. Infections are a pain in the backside. We don't have any antibiotics or anything like that. So the only things we have for fighting an infection are our medical qualifications, stats, which are poor across the entire colony. I think the highest one there, which is our third person across the medical person, it's only about six, which is pretty poor. Also, the lighting in the room is poor and our medicine is poor. So I don't want to roll the dice with infections. I would rather just keep everything clean. Turns out the turbine into a turbine don't work. Really annoying me because how would it block it? It's just blowing wind through. It makes no sense. I mean, I would argue or give the grant that technically wind blowing through one turbine will then be less powerful onto the next turbine so it will be less efficient but it won't stop it right but it is so we're going to have to make do with just the two turbines for now saw so the trade shipped crash now i didn't realize at the time that i'm seeing this i haven't actually actioned it yet how cool this is but yeah a trade ship crashing has the potential to give you a lot of really good stuff for free and people if you get there in time but this is a trade ship so we have space junks that we can turn out but then all of the goods that was on that trade ship including the thousands of silver are all ours to steal I mean borrow get whatever so I am going to set that as immediate there is fires we do need to get there because this stuff will of course burn so setting it as home will make sure my colonists immediately come over to put the fires out but again it is also raining so that should put the fires out for me but i'm not risking anything you don't look look a gift horse in the mouth and when you're getting free tutus like this you jump on it doubled almost tripled the size of the rice field and the cornfield though as you can see, they're not being planted because in terms of people doing the task, plant, planting, um, yeah, it's it, it, they've got other stuff to do. So instead, I'm going to go up here and kill all the donkeys, alpacas and rats on the map. And off they go. They'll go shoot all of them, kill them, bring them back and we'll eat them. No problem there. As long as we're not eating people, I don't think... Oh, and uh, insects. I don't think the people get the negative mood buffs. Obviously a vegan would have a problem with that or a vegetarian, whichever one you'll call it. But I don't think I've got any of those unless I think the Chewbacca character actually is vegetarian, but never mind. They can go and eat grass. There's plenty out there or they'll have to eat the meat that we've got because at the minute the crops aren't growing quick enough so I can't do anything for them. There are two hedgehogs in the freezer as well again freezer that's not frozen but yeah um but the reason they're not being butchered is because i haven't set the setting yet I've, if you install mods after you've been playing a save game you will need to add the extra items in finally there you saw me putting on the air conditioning unit which means as soon as that is finished we'll actually have a freezer 
and we won't be wasting any meat or food. Bedrooms are coming along, bit of wiring still to do. Nine bedrooms almost completed, nine beds, well eight beds built, nine nearly done. Need to get some doors on there as well, some lighting and then some furniture. An end table for sure is the first piece of furniture that I'll put in there. Uh, collecting all of this wood as well is imperative. We are struggling with the plants still. I think if I'm not mistaken though, I'll get lucky with a robot trader at some point. Hopefully they'll come soon. Uh, the robots are not the standard ones that we're used to. When they come, when it gets to that stage, we'll have a look at it. But for 1.5, mo uh, the robot, Miss Robot Plus Plus isn't valid for 1.5 yet. So I couldn't use that. Moving the horseshoes over because I realized I've actually buried them in the buildings. They were still usable though. Um, but I'm not sure if it's any efficiency loss by kind of only allowing them to use two of the eight squares that they could technically stand on. Copy and pasta there. The settings, again, it's always the same. Recreation with a bit of work, recreation and sleep. That home down there in the bottom right where the trade ship was can be ripped up and then these obviously can be, ship junks can be cleaned up. You only get components from them and steel to my knowledge. Still not done the ritual stone yet for the anomaly that is for this patch and playthrough. Specifically because, again, I want to just have a base first. My ducks in a row and a nice symmetrical base. Then I'll get into the terrifying horror stuff. Okay, so somebody has dropped down here. Another person, decent social, average intellectual, rubbish, everything else. So not too fussed about that. These fields still, oh, there we go. Finally, we're getting some plants planted. Everybody's restricted to home. I mean, look, they're really lazy. Right, get this set again. I'm not sure why that was turned off. I think I did have an issue mid-game but at the minute they're all refined to home you can't go anywhere we've had an eclipse now an eclipse isn't a problem for us at the minute we have no power coming from solar and i don't believe there's any skid of the dark traits so the wind turbines will continue to top up the batteries and the lights that we do have will go here is a raid oh how many they're attacking immediately and they're coming in by airship I've got a really bad feeling about this. That is a lot of people. That is a lot of people indeed. They traders, they are. If we can get the traders to engage, and yes, that does work, traders will fight off manhunt impacts and enemies for you. They always count as allies and they will always take on the hostiles. So me hiding here behind the embrasures will go only as well as it can go and then I say sod it <laughs> and this is really cheesy but it should work right hide around the corner they'll come towards that corner and now the traders are engaging now you've got to be careful twofold if I bring my guys in to help shoot you don't want to accidentally shoot the traders because they'll turn on you alternatively if you don't do anything and the traders get hurt they'll blame you so you've got to make a decision, right? And my decision is just wait a little bit. Just wait a little bit until a lot of the gunning stops and then get involved. A lot of people down. I'm not sure who's good and who's bad, to be honest. It was a bit messy, but at least I didn't lose any of mine. Now, obviously, one is going straight in because they wanted to go for that fine meal. But now they're deciding that they want to also shotgun somebody in the face. So, yeah. Annoyingly, getting shotgun at the back as well. You're getting shotgun at the back. That's... Dirty, dirty tactics. Few injuries, mostly for the traders. They didn't seem to be, or blame me, so that's good. And as you can see, there's a good few people in the hospital there. Both my people that were injured anyway, and then a couple that I did actually feel like rescuing for the traders. Because obviously you can rescue traders because they are allies. But if you want to get the enemies, you would have to turn them into prisoners. And then put them in prison beds or medical prisoner beds. Everybody healed up. 
and no real dramas after that. I just said, as soon as everybody was healed up and I was happy, I basically just told them to cut as many trees as they physically could cut down before I got bored of waiting for them. And as you can see, there's about 1,700, 1,800 wood there that needs collecting and bringing back to base. In total, we now have 3,607, as I can see there, 4,400 steel as well, which is good. I need to click the button to uh, shrink this bar down on the left as well. Um, because I usually like it in the category view, not this view where you just see everything. Because there's far too many resources and items in this game to have that view work for anyone, I'm sure. Um, someone can tell me different. I'm willing to listen. We have microelectronics research, which means we now are able to build the trading computer and therefore the trading beacons. So as soon as we get a trade ship flying overhead, we can use and sell any of these goods here. I would dump one in the graveyard because sometimes, and I'm not sure if it's a mod or base game because I haven't really looked into it recently, but you are able to sell chunks. And for some chunks, like, uh, I don't actually know, sandstone is a good example. I don't ever want that because I don't want sandstone bricks because they're not the nicest colour and they're very weak. I'm fine with marble, I'm fine with granite. Uh, but sandstone, usually I'd rather just sell off, if possible. Back into the research, hopefully sometime soon. We are upgrading the floors, if you noticed, into silver sterile floors in the hospital and the research room, which will help with both. Uh, utility columns is a mod that's quite cool. It adds the columns like you would you standard, but they actually have benefits. We'll get to them when I've actually unlocked them. It'll be much easier to explain. Um, but for now, fire foam, IEDs, fire foam is always good for stopping fires, doing devastating damage. IEDs are good for defending against various different things. Basic mech is new, I'm not sure. Uh, advanced lights, solar panels are self-explanatory along with the utility columns that we will look at once they are actually researched and I start putting them down. Suffice to say, you can get some really OP ones, but they do require a lot of resources, even Arco tech level resources, so that's many 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 days weeks months years away so coming back and we did have a bit of an issue you'll notice that I've gone from seven to five colonists unfortunately I didn't catch that because I also had a crash that lost the data however what happened was it was a, uh, a raid and it was uh, dropped in the base so they basically dropped directly in the center there between the two bedroom pods um, and they had grenades of course they did and the first couple of grenades that they threw immediately wiped out two of my colonists. But then luckily, somehow, for some miracle, uh, my colonists managed to actually shoot them and knock them down. So they were cleared out, piled up and chucked on the pile outside. And we're back to normal now. I've just got everybody cleaning up. You'll also see that there are some robots as well because a robot trader came too. Though the robots themselves aren't that significant. Uh, I have one garden robot, which is which is really good for making sure that the crops continue to grow without any issues from my colonists. There is one hauling bot, which is obviously the lowest level, level one. Uh, both of which cost me, a, a, I believe it was 18 or, tw it was about 1800 to 2000 silver each. And then there is some cleaning bots that were about 300 silver each. Uh, they're really cheap because they're the lowest level, the level one. Again, they go up to level five and then you can get to the Omnibot, which is part of the, like I say, the miscellaneous robots plus plus. So it's a it's a combo of the first iteration of that mod and then a different another mod that mixes in with it. The miscellaneous plus plus, as soon as it's available for 1.5, I will, of course, add into the game. Extending now the fields. Now we have the garden bot. It makes sense. So I have that huge rice field at the top, followed by the field there of corn the field now you can see the garden bot which is green is planting the potatoes and then in this corner here i was going to chuck down some devil strand but i haven't researched it yet so instead we'll go cotton because any resource cotton devil strand either one of them is something that you should get into devil strand is obviously a lot better than cotton but it also takes a lot longer to grow and you have to research it With the fields done as well, I am now going to put down a moat. You can see that white outline there is a moat. It takes a lot of building. Even if you're 
character is high level construction like 15 or below it, it's still going to take a while it's a slow process but it's really good it slows them down to 10 percent of their movement speed while they're on that tile obviously after that tile they'll then go back to normal but i am likely to put either some mud or barbed wire just so that anybody coming in gets ridiculously slowed down now the structure of my kill box is a bit crap because they can't really shoot at anything coming in from the east from the right hand side of the map only from down below which isn't as accurate as i'd like it so i am going to readjust that ever so slightly but that of course will be in another episode because we are at time now so thank you very much for watching if you like the video please click like any comments are welcome as always join us on discord subscribe for more take care goodbye